It's the down cycle where you add that makes you all the money. So I spent all of last year buying Solana, Ethereum into the massive sell-offs because then you compound much faster. So you should be embracing the volatility if you've got a long-term view. Welcome back to Crypto Insights. In his latest interview on The Julia LaRoche Show, Raul Pal delves into the dynamics of the market cycles, emphasizing the profitability of adding during down cycles. Pal shares his experiences of strategically buying Solana and Ethereum amid significant sell-offs, highlighting the compounding advantages of such moves. He stresses the importance of embracing volatility, particularly for those with a long-term perspective. Pal advocates for taking risks in the current macro setup, asserting it to be the most significant of all time. While acknowledging the volatility, he encourages strategic risk-taking, especially for those with income and assets. The discussion extends to alternatives like gold and commodities, but Pal contends that, in the face of currency debasement, crypto remains unmatched. Reflecting on the megatrend, Pal notes the growing consensus among prominent figures like Dan Tapiero, Dan Moorhead, and Mark Yusko. He underscores the transformative nature of the digital economy, comparing it to the rapid growth seen when China entered the world stage. In this context, he views the ETF as a trade deal between fiat and crypto, facilitating the influx of capital into the fast-growing digital economy. We will bring you the highlights of this interview, so please don't forget to subscribe and liking the video. Once I started putting together this kind of super thesis of the everything code and the exponential age, I started to look at all assets versus each other to say, if you're going to take risk, where do you take it? And everything was inferior to crypto. And I'm like, it, it becomes very difficult. If you look at it, the best performing asset for three years out of four, every single year since 2009, has been crypto. And then there's one year, which is a bad down year, and then it continues. And the down year, it's the worst performing asset. But over time, it's compounded higher than any single asset class we've ever seen in history. So if that's the case, every other trade-off is suboptimal. Now, I can take that risk because I have income and I've got you know assets. So I can, I can take big risk because I think this is the biggest macro setup of all time. So I'll take that risk. But for other people, you can express some of these views without taking as much risk. You know, if you believe in the debasement of currency, yes, you can use gold, but gold hasn't offset it very well. Yes, you could be cyclical and trade commodities. You know, there'll be, as soon as we start going to macro summer, commodity prices will rise. You can make money from that. You can make money from, you know, buying banks at the bottom of the cycle. You can make money lots of ways. It depends what your objective is. If you, if you, and how it came to me is it just became the big macro view and therefore the big macro bet. And a lot of people you and I know all came to the same conclusion. We've seen it, you know, Dan Tapiero, Dan Moorhead, Mark Yusko, all of these people, one after the other. Uh, a lot of them all were GMI people. We all found about it. You know, we all went through this journey together back in 2012. Um, People have just realized it, it, it is the mega trend. Now, again, it's not for everybody. You have to deal with some huge ups and downs. Um, but, you know, there are ways of playing it in the equity market, stuff like Coinbase, stuff like that. Or otherwise, I just think you're going to be underperforming the debasement of currency. So the standard, I'm going to stick my money in the S&P 500 ETF, you're just not going to get anywhere. That house price is still going to go up and you're just not going to make it any excess returns. And that it's a really serious situation. People don't want to understand it. They don't like this narrative. They don't like to be told that, you know, most assets aren't worth investing anymore, but it's true. And just look at the price action. And even if you take crypto out because you're not a crypto person, justified any asset by the NASDAQ. Just crush them all. And then people say, well, it's going to mean revert. I'm like, what is going to stop this technological revolution accelerating? If you can find me a reason that this stops, as opposed to the business cycle, you know, rates go up, blah, 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 it comes down. I, I can't find reasons. Just when you throw AI, robotics, 
gene editing, space, EV. I mean, it's like a a massive structural change. So I don't see many examples. I mean, if you listen to Stan Druckenmiller, you know, he's long NVIDIA. You know, he gets it. It's like, what's going to stop this? What's going to stop Google going up? Even if they destroy their business model of advertising, they still have a lot of the technology bets. You know, people thought Meta were dead because they had a big sell-off in the bear market last year. I mean, I don't know, 300% this year. It's very hard to keep down technological advance, particularly when it's in monopolistic powers like these large tech firms. Then the ETF comes along. The ETF, people need to think of as a trade deal between Fiat World and Crypto Land. So it's a trade deal to allow capital to flow into this other economy. And as that economy, Crypto Land, grows fast, a lot of money is going to go down through this pipe of the trade deal, which is the ETFs, and then will flourish within that economy. So we're seeing this giant sucking sound of people seeing this economy. It's much like when China came onto the world stage. Is everybody flooded there? Everyone put their capital there? Everyone built offices there? Because they could see the big opportunity. Well, this is the fastest growing economy we've ever witnessed. It just happens to be a digital one. It has its own system of currency, its own interest rates and central bank policy. It has a financial system, which is DeFi. It has states like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, whatever it may be. These are states within crypto land. And those have different policies. We have taxation systems within crypto land. We have assets, NFTs within crypto land. And it's just because they've all been more attractive over time, it's sucking in more and more of fiat world into it. And eventually, I think it basically subsumes fiat world. It's the down cycle where you add that makes you all the money. So I spent all of last year buying Solana, Ethereum into the massive sell-offs because then you compound much faster. So you should be embracing the volatility if you've got a long-term view. If your view is one year, five, uh, one year, three years, three months, it's much harder to deal with. It's so volatile. But when you just zoom out, use the logarithmic trend and don't freak yourself out, which is why I've tried to be the voice of reason on Twitter when everyone's freaking out. It's like, we've all seen, you know, FTX goes bust. Yeah, Mount Gox went bust. Mm -hmm. We've seen this, we've seen that. It's just noise. Does, has the adoption of this technology changed or not? No, keep going. And that was it. So it's just, a, it's a psychology change of understanding long time horizons. And I found that long time horizons are a superpower. And debasement of currency means that the denominator, the purchasing power of that currency goes down and it makes the price of assets look like they're going up, but they're not really going up. When you divide, for example, the S&P 500 or gold or real estate by the Fed balance sheet, they've been flat since 2008. And I discovered within that process that only two assets actually have risen versus the debasement of currency. That was technology, stocks, and crypto. Both were in secular uptrends. So this, like clockwork business cycle, which is based around the debt refi cycle, happens to be exactly the same as the US election cycle. It also happens to be exactly the same as the Bitcoin halving cycle. So all of these cycles are at the same time every time. So here we are today. Today, we're at the bottom of the business cycle. This is the kind of recessionary era. Businesses are laying off staff. Inflation is starting to fall sharply. The, the forward-looking markets, technology and crypto, priced in a recession last year. And they've been recovering since because they've been following the forward-looking indicators of financial conditions and other things. Right now, stuff like the Russell 2000 and oil is living in the present day, which is slow economy. So they're at their lows. And everyone's like, what the hell is going on? Why are these tech stocks going up and everything else is going down? It's because they're forward-looking, as it is their job. So I've been very bullish. I saw the li liquidity cycle, which is the key driver of all assets. The liquidity cycle is based around this interest rate cycle, which is based around 
this whole debt refi cycle. Liquidity started bottoming last year in October, November, December, and that gave us the signal to start getting long both crypto and technology. And that's been you know phenomenally good. I mean, this year, what the NASDAQ's up 45% and crypto is anything, anywhere between 80 and 500% this year. And that's got people scratching their heads. But our forward-looking indicators of the business cycle suggest we're going into what is, right now we're in macro spring. That's when the weather kind of gets warmer every day, but sometimes it's raining and sometimes you've got a frost and, and other times it's hot and you're like, it's always confusing. That's macro spring. We're about to start moving towards macro summer. What is macro summer? Macro summer is when interest rates are falling, inflation is falling, and growth is picking up. That's the kind of holy grail for macro and for investing. And we should be in macro summer for all of 2024 and into 2025. And so my forward-looking basis is that the economy picks up, inflation keeps falling. I think it'll overshoot to the downside, which is the opposite of everybody else's narrative of sticky inflation. And I think the markets are already showing you how excited they are about this idea because we've just gone through a ridiculous rate cycle, kind of an unprecedented rate cycle on the back of the unprecedented inflation. That inflation, I think, was just driven by the pandemic. If you shut down you know, all demand and shut down all supply and then bring it all back on at the same point, you create chaos. So this was Raul Pal and his view on the ongoing macro spring and the anticipated shift to macro summer. With forward-looking indicators suggesting economic growth, falling interest rates, and declining inflation, Pal projects a bullish market for 2024 and 2025. This macro investor's insights provide a comprehensive guide for navigating the complexities of the current financial landscape. Do you agree with Raul Pal's outlook? Feel free to share your thoughts and engage in the discussion in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the latest developments in the crypto space. Thanks for watching.